Hey guys, it's Joe with Wager Talk. I'm joined by Dave Koken. We are going to be talking Matt Conference preview here today. Now, Dave, let's start with Akron. This team went one and three last year. Um, we are seeing their quarterback Nelson back. High hopes for this team? No. Uh, <laughs> no Akron's first alphabetically, and that's about it. Uh, they're first alphabetically in the conference. Uh, no, I they're. They just don't have any talent on this team. I mean, they're better than Bowling Green, and that's about it. Uh, they've got some decent receivers, but you know, it, the, the MAC is is going to be a fun league this year because I think you've got five real contenders uh, to win this conference, and there's not a lot to separate them. But at, but Akron is way down at the bottom of the list. Um, my overall power rankings have them extremely low. Uh, I'm looking to see where I have them overall. It's well, it's just horrible. Uh, they're not a bottom 10 program nationally, but they're not far from it. So there might be marginal improvement in terms of where they've been, but it's not going to show up in the wins and loss column. They just don't have the talent to compete in this conference. I agree with you there. So let's move on to Ball State. Now, this team... I think is going to take the championships for the map. Um, what are your thoughts on them? We've got 17 starters returning. I don't have them as the best team in the conference, but when I mentioned that I, I think it's a five-team race, I've definitely got the Cardinals among those five teams. Look, I, the skill position players on this team are, they're major co conference-level talent. I mean, th these guys can play. Uh, will they be good enough on defense to stop the opposition on a regular basis? I think that's the big question. But you know, I've got Ball State number three in my conference power ratings. I thought they really took a step forward last year in terms of winning games that they had been losing previously. Because if you go back a couple of seasons, Ball State gave away some games and could have been better than they were. Last year, they stopped doing that. They definitely grew up. And I think they're a team with a lot of positive momentum. So while I've got them third in the conference on my power ratings, if they end up on top at the end of the season, I'm not going to be shocked. So one team I already know you don't think is going to end up on top oh. is Bowling Green. They went 0-5 last season. Their, their turnovers are terrible. Um, they've got a lot of young players on this team. Any hopes? None. Uh, in a year where there are tons of returning starters for basically almost every program in the country because of the rules that are in place coming out of last year, uh, Bowling Green still has like seven returning starters on the entire roster. So I, that's not a bad thing because the starters they had weren't any good anyway. Uh, the only question for Bowling Green is, are they the worst team in the country? They're in a battle with New Mexico State, uh, UMass, Connecticut, UNLV. I might be missing a couple of teams, but that's where they are. If they win a game, that's a success story. They're, a, they're just a terrible program at this point. And to me, an easy 12th and dead last in the overall MAC power ratings. So that takes us to Buffalo. Now, this team seems to lack um, depth in the re receivers. They don't seem to have that. I think they have a decent quarterback. What are your thoughts on them, Dave? I think Buffalo goes backwards this year. I, I don't think they're going to be bad uh, because there is talent on the team. There's no question about that. But you got a new coach. Uh, new schemes, and the talent level I don't think is quite what it was last year. I still got Buffalo fourth in my power ratings, but I'm not sure those power ratings are where they should be on this team. I can see them being worse than I have them projected, and I, I, I think Buffalo could be a team that you make some money against early on. They could be vulnerable early in the season, uh, as cohesiveness could be a problem in September. Now that takes us to Central Michigan. This is a team that we saw take a step back last season. Coming into this season, they do have a strong defense. Can they get enough points with their quarterback? I believe his name is Simone, if I'm yeah, pronouncing uh, it right. I, I, I'm, I'm not real. I'm not low on this team. I think they're better than they were a year ago. But I don't think they've got enough pieces to contend with what I would call the top five in the conference. They're just a notch below that. Now, that means they'll be competitive. I think they're going to be competitive against anybody. I wouldn't look for Central Michigan to get their doors blown in uh, because the defense is, is pretty, it's pretty good. And if you have a respectable defense, you usually can hang around games. But I'm just not sure 
that I'm seeing where the consistent production is going to come from on offense. So I've got Central Michigan middle of the pack, and and that's about it. Uh, I, I just don't think they're going to be able to do enough to be a 500 football team. Not bad, but not good enough. So that brings us to East Michigan, and we have the veteran quarterback in there, Hutchinson, and we have a new quarterback in there fighting for the role, Bryant. Um, they've got a defense. Is the defense too soft? What are you seeing with East Michigan? Uh, you just hit the key. I, I think Eastern Michigan's going to score some points. I think they'll be all right. They're a uh, pretty well-coached football team. But the defense just doesn't, doesn't appear to have the talent level that's going to be necessary for them to be, be real a real competitor in this conference. Again, they're not the bottom of the league or anything like that, because we know we know what the bottom of the league is. It's Akron and Bowling Green. But I think Eastern Michigan's in the lower echelon. Uh, I, I just can't see them being a 500 team this year, which means it's, it's going to be no postseason uh, for EMU. They're not horrible, but they're not quite at the level they've been the last couple of years, really the last few years as the program really improved under Creighton. I think they're a little bit of a step backwards program this year. Okay, so now let's talk about Kent State. Now, this is a team that I do believe in. I believe in their quarterback, uh, Dustin Crum. What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I like Crum. Uh, and it's testament to this coaching staff as to how much they've improved over the past couple of seasons because Kent State was as bad as it gets. Uh, just you know, turned the clock back a couple of years. And they've really improved since then. The downside of that is uh, everybody preps for them now. They're not a team you can just overlook in conference play, which which they were until recently. I do like the offense. Uh, I think Crum is is a heck of a quarterback, uh, a guy who's kind of underrated in terms of the national radar. But the defense isn't very good, and I think this is a good MAC this year. I, I, the conference is is stronger as a whole than it's been, so I think that's going to be. It's, it's going to be difficult for Kent State to uh, get back to the promised land, for, which for them would be a bowl game. Um, I think the Golden Flashes will be decent, maybe a little better than Eastern Michigan, uh, probably not as good as Central Michigan, maybe a little better than Miami, a team I'm not real high on this year. But that's still going to be part of, probably middle of the pack and not in that top five of the MAC. Absolutely. So turning to Miami, we did see them um, lead in defensive rush passes last year. The rush defense was incredible. What do you think with this defense this year? Are they going to be able to have that rush defense that we saw last year, or has it been too much turnover? I, I think there's been too much turnover. I don't think the defense is going to be as strong as it was last year. And again, it's one of those components I really look at seriously going into the season is offensive line play. And I think this team could have some issues on the offensive line. I do not see this being a real good season uh, for Miami. Uh, maybe a middle of the pack, uh, but I, I, I just don't see them being a team that's going to get uh, half their games in the win column. I, I think it could be a disappointing season for Red Hawks fans. Now, that brings us to Northern Illinois. Now, this team went 0-6 last season. Um, it's a young team but we're seeing a promising O-line out of them. Do you feel the same? I think they're, I don't think they're going to be uh, winless again, uh, but the glory days for Northern Illinois, and they were a real good program. I, I mean, a, a really good mid-major program. Uh, those days are long gone. Those are in the rearview mirror, and they're so far in the rearview mirror, they're not even in the uh, rearview horizon at this point. It's a bad program. It's not as bad as Akron. It's not as bad as Bowling Green. But the four sets of power ratings that I use, 10th, 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 and 10th. So they're at the bottom of the middle of the pack, if you want to call it that. And I, I, don't, I think it's generous to give them a mid-pack rating in the MAC overall. They're not going to be very good. Maybe two or three wins. That's about the ceiling to me for Northern Illinois. Absolutely. So then we turn to Ohio. Now, what are the Bobcats without Solich as their head coach? Well, you know, I, the transition can't be seamless, but I think it'll be, I don't think it'll be horrible. Uh, Tim Albin's been there forever. Okay. So it's not like a brand new system's going to be put in place. I think it's going to be kind of business as usual for Ohio. Uh, and, and I think there'll be a, a decent football team. 
who knows? Maybe Albin will be a little less conservative than Solich was at times. Uh, I think the team will be motivated to win games for Solich, even though he's not there anymore. He's still going to be around the program. Uh, so I think they're going to be fired up as far as that goes. The problem for the Bobcats is I don't think the defense is as good as it was last season. I think it's I've got them downgraded a little bit. Uh, the offense will be okay, but it's certainly not a spectacular offense. So I've got them as the fifth best team. And I, I've said a few times that I think this is a five-team race. So technically, I've got them in the race. But I've got them as the bottom team of that top five. Uh, I'd be a little bit surprised if they get to the top of the heap. They'll be good, but not real good. Are you expecting to see um, improvements of the red zone? Because last season, they did struggle in that red zone converting. Do you think they're going to do better this year under a new coach? I'm not sure they're going to be any better in the red zone. And part of the reason I'm saying that is, you know, the guy who was calling the offensive plays last year is now the head coach. So I'm not sure they're going to be any less conservative than they were in 2020. Uh, I'd like to see it. I mean, I think you got to open things up and, and take some chances in the red zone. If, if the other side knows what's coming or thinks they know what's coming, they're probably going to be able to stop it. Uh, but the flip side is there's room for improvement. So maybe Ohio can can get better in that area. And if they do, then my having them fifth overall in the conference might be a little bit short. So that brings us to Toledo. Now, I think this is a well-rounded team. They've got a very strong offense, very strong defense. Dave, what are your thoughts? Are they making your top five? Oh, yeah, easily. I think they're, I'll tell you, my two, two, two top teams in this conference, and I know most people probably have, oh, they might have Ball State. In the top, in the top spot, they might uh, they might have Buffalo because Buffalo has been a really good program in the top spot. But I think the two best programs in this conference this year are Toledo and Western Michigan. I give Toledo a slight edge on my power ratings, very slight edge. Uh, look, Eli Peters is really good. Okay, uh, the question I have on them is the defense, which was very yielding at times. I do think they have to improve that area. And I kind of like to go against the popular choice, uh, which I think Toledo's getting the most love in this conference. Part of that is their schedule, which is quite favorable. And the Toledo bandwagon right now to win the MAC, uh, it's got a lot of people on it. I'm going to pick them second, despite the fact that I actually have them rated first overall in my power ratings. I think Western Michigan is going to be the team that wins this conference this year. I think they'll find a way to slip past. Toledo, Western Michigan has to avoid giving away games when we talk more about the Broncos in a minute. Uh, uh, Toledo's certainly not going to be a surprise if they win the conference. On paper, they do look like they might be the team to beat. But I've got enough concerns about the defense to, in my uh, official predictions, have them as the number two team in the conference and not number one. Well, I feel like I already know your answer on Western Michigan. This team went four and two last season. They've been so close to getting a title. Is it the year they, they get it done? Absolutely. I think they do. I, I think Western, I, I look, I like the coach. I don't see any real weaknesses on the team. I think they're uh, average, not just Mac average, but overall average or better uh, in, in every position uh, uh, breakdown. So I think they're a strong team. The question is, do they avoid the giveaway game they had? They've, that's been a problem for them each of the past couple of years. Giving away a game they should have won, and they did it. They did it once last year, and I'm not going to. I don't want to go back and start talking about that game because I was on them, and I was not happy with the result because it was a game I thought I got this one, and then I didn't. But I think the pieces are all there for Western Michigan to move up the ladder and win this conference this year. Now I I've only seen. I will tell you that on, on the sets of power ratings I use, only one has them number one. But I, I just like the mix. I like the maturity on this team. And I think this is Western Michigan's year. I like the Broncos to win the MAC. Well, you guys heard it here. Dave has the Broncos to win the MAC. Thank you for joining us for the MAC conference preview. You guys, for all of Dave's plays, make sure you check out wagertalk.com.